Hey everyone, you got Joe Isaias and Irfian here from the Automator. And during the hero call last week, um, Irfian out of nowhere is like, "Oh, let me show you this app, uh, Abirium. Was it? What'd you call it, Irfian? <laughs> yeah, Abirium. Abirium tool that I had written. He he had found this web win app driver tool, which we're I'm just learning now on how it's related to UIA and ACC and stuff. And so I thought, you know what? It looks really promising. So get ready to be excited. This is more of a discovery call to talk about it. But I thought, let's record it. So maybe you guys like seeing this. And let us know if you want, you know, if you think we're on a right on, on to something here. So, right. Irfan, you were saying something with the app driver uses the UIA or maybe ACC also. Um, yeah, uh, okay. what 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 I suspect it is using UIA and uh, the WinApp driver connecting to the UIA, but giving us the HTTP server for the API calls and uh, and when we run that WinApp driver, uh, it comes with the installer from there. This is the link WinApp driver, and we can download it from here. But we have to enable the developer mode to have to give it the access to all our application that we gonna use with it. That's interesting. So then, uh, then we have. Uh, uh, then I wrote. Uh, I like read about it, and I I was doing the radium thing. So I look it up if there is a app driver. We got the web driver, but if there is, then it was a thing. So I read it understand it i read the api these apis are same apis like if i go to the documents and uh, these apis calls are same just like the web driver apis right. but there are some differences between the web and so so we also have the differences between we can get elements by Run runtime ID something called something something is called like we can uh, accessibility ID we can get a, a element right. by a class name and ID name tag and Xbox let, as well. Let me jump in there just a little bit because okay. for somebody who has never heard about this, this might be very confusing. So here's the point. First of all, what we're trying to do is control or automate a program. There has been for a long time what are called web apps, web drivers, which on the browser at the top, you could put a URL with an action and it would trigger an action inside a web page, for example. And when you're writing a tool, you could do a web call just like the browser is doing at the top on the address bar. So you yeah. can tell your program, hey, make an HTTP request to this port on this computer. And when you do that, it would automate the browser that that URL is connected to. That's interesting. And we have shown this, for example, you have done this with Rufadium already, right? Yeah. Now, the but... application driver does the same but not only for browsers. And that's where the, the interesting part comes in. And funny thing, you can do the same API calls that you would do for a browser. Yeah, or well, quite, most of them the same. Most of them are. Same. Yeah, most of them. But you could do them this time to control applications, which is insanely interesting to me because um, we always, we're always looking for more reliable ways of clicking things or automating a program well now today and, and hopefully you, simpler than uia is for the that's object. what i was gonna yeah. say that's what i was gonna say so so you were just demonstrating that just with an for example this this click um look at the click so post okay, this now here the address would be your ip address at the beginning slash uh, and, and the, the port that so so yeah. it would be the, ad yeah. the address of your computer, the port where the driver is running, slash yeah. session, slash, yes. and then you have to put a session ID because you're going to get that once yes. there's a connection. And yes. once you do that, you have slash click. click. It yes. would actually click 
and you probably will have to tell it which element you want to click, which down there you can see which elements you can get. You can yeah, get yeah, specific yeah. elements, you can get different elements, you can get the active element. So it is very interesting because there, there, is, is, a a click. Click. there is a session click, it is a post command, and uh -huh. there is an element click. You, you, you have see, to get session so ID and the element ID and then exactly. the click. With but, this but, click, we do not have to pass so many parameters, but this, I think we have to give X and Y's. Applications and stuff like that, yeah, okay. It, it needs that. Right, so for the session ID, if you only have the session ID, you only know what the program is, but you don't know where to click. But yes. when you do it for an element, the yeah. web driver, the app driver knows what element, where is located, and when you say click, it just goes there, it clicks, okay. But yeah. this is the cool thing. Notice how easy it is. It's just one line. You just have to put two things, the session ID and the ID of the element, and then you send the word click. With UIA, on the other hand, it is a little bit trickier for people who are not used to objects. This is not an object call. This is just an HTTP request, yes. which is amazingly simple. It's very cool. Now, a few seconds ago, uh, we were talking about, hey, is there an inspecting tool for it? And when you were reading about it, you saw spy plus plus and the inspect.exe. Those yeah. two tools, we know them from a long time ago, and they are related to UI or to UIA and to the ACC library. So basically, that's when we made the connection. Hey, it looks like this web app thing is kind of like a wrapper on top of the ACC library and the UIA library, but making it simpler because you just have to pass one line like this and it would perform the action, which with the other one, it would be a little bit more complex to get if you don't know about objects, especially. So uh, some time ago, I wrote this library and uh, there was two parts, like one is taking care of the app driver and the other one is itself a Ethereum and uh, I have simplified so many methods and uh, you can get the session, create new session, get the ongoing session, get the session by location. I don't know what it is. I haven't tested it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, <laughs> good question. Get, Do you have get the session by HWMD. That's cool. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Yeah, but that's good question. Do you have one. Do you have examples of how to use a virium? Do you have code like the one that says test on the left? Can you? Yeah, open this this one I just tested it on the notepad and I haven't like explored it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so now so, what I'm trying to look at? Can you go to the top? Let's see how easy it is. So you just create a new driver on line three. And that's it. Yes. And then you just say driver status right yeah, there. Yeah, we can check it out. Right, and then later on you can. Now that you have a driver, you can pass it the path of an executable and then just get a new session for that executable. Yes. Now, once you have a session like Notepad, then you can perform all the other actions that we have been talking about. Like yeah. in this, the first in, in line 15, it would dump all the elements available to you yeah. that later on you can use with other functions like get element by class name yeah, and I you mean. just use that and now you have an element which is the part that I was that we were talking about the now this edit one on line 18 you can say edit one dot click for example if it was a button yeah which yeah, is really cool it. right in this case as it is an edit field then you can send keys to it and it adds text to it easily so using the using this seems to me very simple once you get the hang of it well and Compared to UIA or something else, it would it, it is extremely easy to follow what it would do because I, I wouldn't. You have more lines in there than you need, but if you just needed to put text in it, you wouldn't have to write all that. You just write the driver, the Notepad driver, and then send keys to it to the element. Is that what? Am I understanding that right? Yes. Okay, and, cool. and we are getting the what is inside the tire, what is inside as well. Okay, cool. Tire. Well, what for me, because I think as is now, it's like I, I, even though I've been watching him use UIA and ACC, I, I don't program it because I'm like the objects are really to me really intense, like you really got to know object oriented programming and be able to discover things and stuff. 
But I do know API calls, web service API calls pretty well. And so I'm looking at this going, I can, you know, once you understand the methods in the web service API calls, like it's not hard. Like this will be so much simpler of an approach once we have a good discovery tool, right? To make it, I know I've seen an Irfan, can you show the dump all what it actually exported? Yeah, let me just, just to give people an idea. Um, now, this is what I was telling him. No one wants to see this. I don't want to see this, like what it comes up with, because it was a crazy amount of information um, that got dumped from Notepad. Yeah. So but, this part right here, huh? Yeah, it's, it's taking time. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's oh, listing well, everything. It's listing all the available controls that you could actually yeah. connect to easily, I would say. Yeah, but I wanted that the text file that you had with all the XML. The dump file is it's in the end. Yeah. And yes, we have, the one we at have, the end. We have created it already yeah. for this. Is this is what I'm like? No one wants to read this to find <laughs> out where's my yeah, button. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, now hold on. Um, click in there and hit um, open the menu and say format document. Is this in XML? Yeah, it is. So yeah, there is a bit of structure to it. We just, we just press it. control. Oh, okay. there you go. That, that okay. right. Yeah. Just try that. Let's see how that looks. Definitely yeah. better. This is yeah. This is the um and and then you can collapse everything and then just look for what you're looking this for. This is window. This is a window. This is a pan. Inside the pan, we got a toolbar and a split buttons. Right. Then we have buttons then, here. Then we have buttons. But, okay. but again, I mean, this is all great stuff, but no one really wants, I mean, yeah. there's no reason to be examining this when we can make a discovery tool just like right. we have the other things, right? And right. make it really nice. easy. Right. But the we fact have, that it mapped it all for us, that's awesome. Yes. We have process ID and a runtime ID for a specific to that button. Like it is change for every button yeah for each That's button is idea. you have a, a very specific wow. id that is given at runtime oh um, well, that's sadly sadly right. but change. you have an automation id there right which is a so, now that automation id i guarantee that doesn't change well I we should we doesn't. should look at some tool because i know Isaiah, when we were doing stuff with the inspection tools with desk a lot, a lot of time, like not everything had an automation ID, right? And we're like, oh, that's, that's right. But, but, but here oh. it looks like they do. Well, but that's why we should check the two, yeah. right? To see if the if this, an app driver is doing that or if it's, if if Notepad happens to be fully fleshed out. That's right. right. We, we could try another app and yeah. see if we get the same yeah. good thing about having elements. Incidents, ID. Right. 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 Now, the interesting thing here is Let's say that, of course, I don't want to. I don't want to read all that to find something out, right? That's okay. But what I can use that for is that I dump the elements into this source file, this XML, and my viewer, the inspector that I'm going to create, doesn't have to actively look at Notepad. I just have to read this file, and whenever my mouse is over one of those things, like for example. When I, I just check on the automation ID, for example, like this. And whenever my mouse is on top of that, I just grab the values of it and just highlight it. So right. it is interesting because I don't have to actively or live, um, calculate live what the element is. I could take a snapshot yeah, you've done that. Work the problem with that. Yeah, exactly. The only problem with this is that if you change the size of the window or move stuff around, they might not be exactly what uh, what you need. But for a very quick thing, it would be very uh -huh. interesting to take a snapshot, tell me where everything is. Yeah, when but I hover over them. However, Isaiah, as you mentioned, that automation ID shouldn't change, right? So as right. long as we're using that in our in our method of what we're trying to do. It shouldn't right. really matter if things have moved. Actually, we can we can get the location of every element within within the window and as well as on the view. So these are two methods we can get the location right. of the button or anything else within the application and the location in the view, like this whole desktop, for example, and we can have the location of that. And right. as well as we are having to look 
application hidden with Yes, like, exactly. You, you have everything. In, in what format we dump it, we have the Remember the highlight function that I created for um, the automator spy? Yeah. Yeah. If you have this location of the width and height right. and the X and Y, the highlighter, you give me that and it creates a little border around it and I just put it in. You see what I mean? So it is. this is this very good information for highlighting where stuff are, where, where stuff is. So really cool. All right. So this, so, yeah, what you guys think? Was there something else in this? No, I was just going to say, like, this opens a very good door for us to now automate programs in a more reliable way than for you to find out everything and then click. This, I just tell it, hey, tell me where that button is. And it just goes ahead and gives you the location. Now you can send a click there. So it is a more reliable way of automation that um, I'm really excited about for applications. That's the key part. Like, no, we didn't have that before. And it reminds me of something that Tank, because I always got annoyed with the web service APIs and then regular programmable API. And Tank said, look, as long as you think of everything as is when you connect, try to connect to a program, it's a server request trying to, you know, ask a yeah. question to a thing. Like this is reversing that order now where we're actually controlling programs with it, but it truly is still the same thing of we're we're doing a HTTP rep request to either, you know, trigger a, an action. But um yeah. yeah, it's very it's really interesting. I'm like, I, I think this is if we have a discovery tool, this is gonna be very quick to automate programs and hopefully reliable. Now it should be fast, right? Like can we can we check to see like when, you know, something takes action, like that's going to be a fun thing to learn also, right? Is it, if it's available, how do we know when something doesn't happen? When yeah. it's, it's a lot that's to discover, example. but still very cool. Thanks for sharing that, our friend. It's, it's um, really interesting. As I said, we mentioned this in the hero group and the hero calls, we have two hours on Fridays right now, one hour on Saturday. So um, you guys are missing three hours a week of, of watching mm -hmm. us work through things and help people and teach the new topics. So I hope you enjoyed that. Have a good day. Cheers. Bye. Bye.